that they will hear with ears of faith and understanding. My God, it is only you can speak this morning. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done as it is in heaven. So be it on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may take your seats, beloved. Hallelujah. We are so glad to. Thank you very much, Alreka. Isn't Wasn't she wonderful? Wasn't God wonderful? Can we just give Jesus praise? Hallelujah. As Pastor Jonathan said, good, good morning to everybody. Welcome to Powerhouse Ministries. You know what? The, the thing that really fascinates me about this God that we serve, He's a God of all tribes, colors, and creeds. You see, my brothers and sisters, once you're in the kingdom, if you are called the Son of God, and if, if you have been baptized with water, and if you have accepted Jesus Christ in your heart as Lord, there is always place for you. You are never excluded in the kingdom. Uh huh. It is for all tribes, all races. The kingdom of God is a multicultural, dimensional, different of a, this black, white, colored, whoever you are. If your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, you will never be excluded. Amen. So this is your father's house and you have liberty in this place. Hallelujah. Okay, the children is running a bit. They are excited for the word of God. Amen. Uh -huh. Jesus said, suffer the, the little children not. Amen. So, so we are excited this morning to be in the presence of the Lord. And I'm so glad that you came. Is there any first time visit? I've got some visitors all the way from the United States of Brooklyn. Uh -huh. I thank you. I thank you, mother. I thank you, Lance's mommy. I thank you for, for your children that is here this morning. Re Beloved, we built a church in Brooklyn. In that lady that's sitting there, that little lady, she's a little in stature, but she's a powerful woman of God. We built a church in Brooklyn, Brooklyn Community Church, and we preached the gospel in Albert Gardens and in places that the church not necessarily go to. Amen. But Jesus tells us to go. Uh -huh. When we go, the power of God will come upon us. The power of God is not for goosebumps and to feel good and to shake and fall over. But the power of God, the anointing, is the enablement and the empowerment of God to work in His kingdom. Hallelujah. But this morning, beloved, I want to speak on the process to possess your promise. How many of you know that when you are a child of God, God has some promises for you? God has some blessings for you. God has an inheritance for you when you are a son and a daughter of the Most High God. Uh -huh. You see, in the society that we are living in, we are taught, you know, the quick fix scheme. The quick rich scheme. You know, the microwave scheme. You put your two-minute noodles in the microwave and in two minutes it is done. But in the kingdom of God, there is a process to possess your promise. The promise of God is the word of God for our lives. The promises of God is yes and it is amen. God's promises, God's word will not return empty or void when it is spoken over your life. It will accomplish, the Bible say, what it is set out to do for you. The problem though is that, do you believe God's word? Many people can clap hands and sing hallelujah, but when they are alone, the enemy ministers to, to them lies, unbelief, and doubt. Lies, unbelief, and doubt is the dream killers of God. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, by faith, we will inherit the promises of God. But I just want to read a side note this morning. You can be qualified and not yet equipped. You can have a personality, but have no character. You can have a dream, but that doesn't mean you have a vision for the dream. You, have, can, you can have knowledge, but that doesn't mean that you have wisdom. The kingdom, the kingdom citizens possess wisdom. Wisdom is different to knowledge. You know, you can study at university and get a great degree of knowledge. But you see, it is wisdom. The Bible says when Solomon, when, um, Solomon prayed, he asked for wisdom. That he would lead the people of God. Knowledge cannot lead the people. It is wisdom 
power and anointing that will lead the people of God to a place of victory. The Bible reads in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 17, and that is my key scripture this morning, by faith Abram when he was tested offered up Isaac and he who had received the promise offered up his only begotten son. Through faith and patience, we will inherit the promises of God. You see, right at the beginning in the book of Genesis, God is prophesying that He will send Jesus, His only Son. Isaac was a type of Jesus that God was saying to His people, you know what, there will come a time when I will give my only Son. Abraham was a type of father. Father God, Isaac, a type of son. Jesus, the Son of God, God the Father. Do you see that, beloved? So God is speaking even in the Old Testament. The Old Testament is the New Testament revealed. The New Testament is the Old Testament concealed. So we need both. We need the New Testament. And some of us are New Testament believers. And some of us are Old Testament believers. And some believe you mustn't tithe. And some believe you must tithe. But in order for the New to be established, the Old has to be. Uh-huh. And so the word of God is also the promises of God and it's yes and amen. Can you see that Isaac was a type of Jesus? Beloved, today you have to understand that greatness does not happen overnight and greatness does not happen automatic. You don't, you, you don't become great overnight and it does not ha happen automatic. It comes with a process. It comes with a progress. It comes with the things of life and the struggles of life and the victories of life where, you, where we find ourselves in as believers of the Lord. Beloved, greatness also happens by heaven's intent, time, place, and by heaven's design. The greatness of God in you, it happens by heaven's design. Nothing happens under the sun by chance. Nothing catches God by surprise. The struggles that you are facing today, it is no surprise to heaven. The victories that you will win tomorrow, heaven knows about it. And heaven is with you because you are a citizen of heaven. You have to understand and believe, beloved, that you are, if you are a son of God, you have access to the promise and the property. You have access to the promises of God and you have access to God's property. Didn't Jesus say, I will give you the keys and whatever you shall bind in heaven shall be bound in heaven and whatever you will loosen on the earth will be loosened in heaven. Uh -huh. So you have a key in your hand. You have keys that heaven has given you because you are a son. Let me put it to you in this way. My children that stays in my house, they have a key to the property. They are not strangers. Uh -huh. But other people that are strangers to me, I won't give them a key. And in order for you to possess the promises of God, God will give you a key. But it is for you to use that key. Because you see, when my son or my daughter or my wife opens the door, they have access to the TV, to the fridge, to the bed, to the food. They have access to everything. And so when we have the keys of the gates, we have access to the promises and the word of God for our lives. But if you're not going to use your key, you will be standing outside forever. You will not experience the blessing of the property and the blessing of the promises. And many people are stuck at the cross. They see Jesus crucified, but they don't go further as the cross. Because, you know, when you go further as the cross, you are stepping into your God-given destiny. Hallelujah. Jesus says, I am the door. Jesus Christ himself is the door to your future to live your best life for him. Many people today, beloved, only live for themselves. My car, my house, my ministry, my big church. They don't live for others. 
They don't live to make others' life at ease. So they're only living for themselves. But when you live a life in Christ, you always live with a motivation to take others further than yourself. That is the power of the Word of God for our lives. The reason why life sometimes seems difficult and hard for us, it is because the enemy has got a glimpse of your tomorrow and that's why he's fighting you today. The moment the enemy fights you, the moment you go, you go through times of trial and testing, the enemy has a glimpse of the greatness of God on the inside of you. Many people want to become great on the outside. But you see, greatness starts at the beginning when you realize who you are in Christ. And when you become to realize who you are, you will also know what your assignment is. You will also know what to do. You won't wander around aimlessly looking for a prophet to prophesy over your life because you can also hear the voice of God. You can also experience the presence of God. You can also walk in the blessing of God. The blessing of God, it is not reserved for the fivefold ministry. The blessing of God is reserved for the children of God. Hallelujah. You see, when God rained manna from heaven to the Israelites, everybody ate of it. Not the elect. Not the big shots. Not the superstar preachers. Everybody took partake of the manna and the coils of heaven. When it rains on the earth, it rains on the one that serves God and the one that does not serve Him. I cannot understand and fandom the love of God. That even while the Bible say that even while you were sinners, Christ died for us. You didn't do anything to earn your salvation. Christ paid the price for all of us, for you and for me. Sometimes when you write a difficult examination, the teacher is quiet. Sometimes through your times of struggle, you pray and you ask, God, where are you? God, everybody has walked out on me. God, I am so alone. But God is right there where you are, just keeping silent, wanting you to pass the test. You have to pass in the kingdom of God. Nothing happens automatic. You have to pass the test. You will go through a time of testing and a time of trial. I want to tell you today that your life is full of purpose and promise. Your children's lives are full of purpose and promise. And that's why the enemy fights us because he do not want to see the plan and the purpose unfold in your life. The enemy hates it when God's people, prom when God's people prosper. The enemy don't like the blueprint of God. The enemy, Satan, hates you. He hates your children and he's come to kill, the Bible say, to rob and to destroy don't sell your birthright for a mere morsel of food. But rise up and stand in integrity before a holy God. God will develop you in order to get you to your place of greatness and promise. God will train you. God will teach you. God will anoint you because God, the greatness of God is on the inside of you. God will test you. God will refine you for the work and the capacity to serve in the kingdom and to serve His people. Beloved, the reason why God called us, it is not for us to become great. God calls us to serve others. Because when you look at that word serve, serve is greatness. But Jesus told His disciples, if you want to become great, then you have to serve. And today, nobody wants to serve and everybody wants to be great. And that's why I say greatness does not happen automatic and it does not happen overnight. And before God will use you, He will test you, He will refine you for the work and the capacity to serve in His kingdom. We need the fire of God to burn out all the dirt in our lives so that when we serve God, 
when we serve His purpose, when we serve God and when we serve His purpose, too many people serve their own purpose. Uh -huh. There's a difference in serving your purpose and there's a difference in serving God's purpose. And so God will refine you for His purpose. So when you serve His people, you will serve as pure as gold. There will be nothing on you. Your anointing, your ointment, there will not be flies in your ointment. Because God don't want you to put fly ointment on other people. God don't want you to contaminate other people with your issues. And don't we all have issues? Yes. I have issues. And sometimes I cry with the tissues for my issues, but I have too. Uh-huh. In this microwave world we live in today, we only hear the Lord is going to bless you with a house and 10 step, steps to greatness. You are so powerful and these are all great and true. But we are never taught the process. We hear the word, sow a seed and you will be rich. You, you see how people manipulate money and tell you, you know, if you do this and then we will do that. God is not a manipulator. Uh -huh. God will never manipulate you in doing anything and in giving anything. If you don't want to give, you don't have to give. If you don't want to pay your tithe, you don't have to pay your tithe. But in every action, there is a consequence. Uh -huh. So if I pay my tithe, I know that the Bible say, not me, that God will then rebuke the devourer on my behalf. So when my, my rebuker, when my devourer come, the Lord will rebuke him. Uh -huh. Because now I'm paying protection money. No, I'm just joking. Because I'm giving to God, not because of obligation, but I'm giving because I love him. I can offer up to him because I love him. God never force his love on us. Uh -huh. If God comes to you today, and if you reject him, he will slowly backing away, but he will never force himself on us because he loves us too much to do that. He is such a gentleman in his own right that he will never force himself. Salvation is a free gift. Uh -huh. It is not something to force upon people. It's a free gift. Life and death, it is a free gift, but you can choose it. You can either choose destruction or you can either choose the victory of God in Christ. Hallelujah. So we are not taught the process, you know, to possess because we are living in a quick, rich, quick scheme, society, microwave world. And sometimes people believe that if I study two or three years in Bible school and then I'm the great apostle. But it's a process. There's a time of refinement. There's a time of darkness. How many of you know that negatives gets developed in a dark room? Uh -huh. So sometimes when there is darkness in your life, it does not mean you're in sin. It just means that God is busy developing all your negatives and making it a positive for Him to have influence in the world that you are living in. Hallelujah. Did you get that? So we are, so people are being hyped up on a Sunday in church. You know what? If you do this and then do it. But people still walk away broke and sick and weak. And so when we call to call upon people to pray, people don't even know how to pray anymore in this society. Because prayer has become the least on the list. But the Bible says, if my people who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray. Then will I hear from heaven. Everybody wants to be great and anointed, but nobody wants to go to the process to be refined and to press. God wants to press you, drag you. God wants to do that and he's doing it on purpose. Mm -hmm. Can I go to, can I just read you a scripture out of 2 Corinthians 4 verse 8 and 11? Can we go there? Have you got your Bibles, beloved? Have you got your phones? The Bible should be on your phone. Not WhatsApp only or Facebook or 
to what the Bible says that man will not live by bread alone, but by the word. I'm going to read for you. It says here in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8, it said, Paul writes to the church, and it says, We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always caring about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ also may be manifested in our bodies. The dying of Christ in your body. In your physical body, you're carrying the stench of death of Christ in you. And to some people, when you come into the office on a Monday, you that stench of Christ on you, you it, it repels them, but they, they can't take it. But to other people that is in the kingdom, it is a fragrance of aroma. Oh, brother, when you speak the word, when you walk in faith, it is a, it is a sweet smelling fragrance to those that is in the kingdom of God. You see, my brothers and sisters, when a tea bag is in hot water, you can appreciate its true strength. When you are pressed, when the, when the olives and the, and the grapes are pressed, you can, you can appreciate its true strength. Sometimes uh, when life uh, press you, you can see the true strength uh, of Christ in your inner man coming out. But when it's always uh, a feel good, God is good. You don't see the substance. You don't see the depth of your relationship with Christ. And it's oppervlakkig, uh, shallow, shallow. It is shallow. And sometimes you need the pressing of life. You need uh, the tenacity to trust God, to, to, to call upon His name, uh, to, to invite Him in. Uh, sometimes when, we, when you have your pity party, He can even come and celebrate with you on your pity party because that's how much God loves you. He does not love you like I love you. You do something good to me, I give you something back. Oh, I love you, brother. But when God loves, He loves eternally. He loves everlasting. His, his love is complete. His love is something that I can't even describe. That is how the love of God is. Beloved, in order for Abram to become a father of many nations, he had to leave his place of familiarity. Sometimes when God is busy shaping and molding your life into His purpose and for your greatness, sometimes you need to leave your place of familiarity. If we are going to inherit the promises of God, we also have to live, <coughs> to start living on purpose for God. We have to start to live on purpose. <coughs> If you are going to inherit the promises of God, you have to live for Him. Many people want to experience the blessing and the favor of God, but they don't know God. They don't want to live for Him. We say to people, come, let's go out and we go feed some people on the street. No, pastor, that is not in my uh, ministry. Now, what is your ministry? No, pastor, I, <coughs> I, I'm not a prayer. So that means you're not speaking to God. So what is your ministry? Our ministry, beloved, all of us collectively, our ministry is to reconcile man back to God. How you do it, how you do it, you need to ask the Father, Father, how can you use me today? You see, I can go in a place where you might not go, it can go in. And I can have influence in a place where you don't, and so vice versa. You know, if I come and to speak to businessmen, I'm going to tell them, repent for the kingdom of God. So it's going to, but you that's a businessman, you can reach out to your fellow businessmen on the level that you are at. You see, because the kingdom of God is not a place. Powerhouse is not the kingdom of God. You are walking with the kingdom on the inside of you. And wherever you go, you're giving off a fragrance. What fragrance are you giving off? You have to ask yourself. You tell me, okay, pastor, I want to go to China to do a missionary work. Did you tell your neighbor about Jesus already? Because if you didn't tell your neighbor about Jesus, don't go to China. 
Mm-hmm. Because God can use you wherever you are at. It is just, blessed are those that is available. God don't want you, don't, God can give you anointing. But God also wants your availability. Because it's in availability where you avail yourself to the Holy Spirit and say, Spirit of God, what do you need me to do? And so we need to leave our place of familiarity, familiar habits, familiar traits, familiar standards and norms because we cannot enter a new place of destiny with old habits and mindsets. You cannot leave, enter into a new destiny, a new place of work with an old mindset. You see, when, when the 12 spies were sent out, 12 were looking at the same thing. But 10 saw giants and 2 saw grasshoppers. What are you seeing in the spirit? In Joseph's case, he was the son of many, the coat of many colors. We do not know in what context he disclosed his dreams to his brothers. But what we do know is that his brothers hated him for it. When Joseph began to tell his dreams to his brothers, they hated him. In fact, they wanted to kill him. And sometimes we should not tell our God-given dreams to everybody because you will have some haters and some dream killers and they are normally right very close to you. The dream killers, the haters, the dream killers that says, Delia, that cannot happen for you. Uh Uh-huh, it's a dream killer. You always speak to the brother and the sister, but there's no faith. No, brother, but you see, we are living in a tight economy. And, um, you know, in South Africa, in this country of corruption and all of those, the dream killers. A dream killer don't have faith. He only speak what he see in the natural. So if you're going to speak to a dream killer, it is not that the person is bad, but it's not going to speak faith. And your faith will not connect with a dream killer. Because he will make you feel out of place. He will tell you, but you are mad and gozy. How can that happen for you, Nogals? No, man, it can't happen. So you need to speak to people of faith. The mistake that Joseph did, he was speaking to dream killers, his own brothers. Watch what you say and to who you say it. But you see, even in that situation, God turned his situation around. We do not know if Joseph was full of pride when he spoke his dreams to his brothers. Maybe his brothers, you know, they looked at him. You see, our father gave him a coat of many colors. What about us? And sometimes there is elements in the body of Christ when you are promoted, they say, bless you, pastor. But in their heart, mm, uh uh-huh. They are there, beloved brothers and sisters. But instead of that, God still elevated Moses and Joseph and got him to a place of destiny and promise. Because you see, when heaven, when heaven is promoting you, no man can shun and shut the promotion of heaven. No man, no doctor, no great apostle. Because when heaven promotes you, doesn't the Bible teach us where does promotion come from? Does not come from the north, the south, the west, or the east. It comes from, uh aha. So when God wants to promote you, there is no demon in hell that will take the promotion of God away from you. You just got to believe God and you just got to step in faith. You just got to declare. You just got to decree. Although something looks so stupid for you, you have to do what you have to do and God will do what He has to do. I remember I was praying in our business and we had two dresses. and said, Lord, we declare and we decree. A time and a season on, it doesn't look the same. The word of faith was spoken. God's dream was prayed into. 
believers coming alongside, supporting us. Hallelujah. And that is sometimes you need believers, you need a support structure of prayer and intercession and encouragement and upliftment. And as you do that, you'll see how the dream and the purpose of God unfolds in your life. You see, when God developed Joseph, he was developed in the pit, in the prison, and in the palace. Hallelujah. And sometimes when you find yourself in a pit and a prison situation, sometimes you just need to be still and know that he is God. That he's busy working it out for your good. Because the Bible says God works out things for the good of those that love him. Sometimes you just got to sit in the pit and love him. Sometimes you just got to be in your room alone and say, God, I worship you. God, I praise you. Sometimes we are too quick to run to the phone instead of running to the throne. Uh -huh. Our brother David was also working in the backside of a wilderness, tending to sheep, fighting a lion and fighting a bear. My brothers and sisters, the field of life will train you to trust God. The field of life, when the bear comes, when the lion comes, David trusted God. And David knew it was impossible to slay that lion and that bear. But with God on his side, he's going to crush that lion and that bear. And sometimes in your place of purpose, Pursuing God's dream and destiny for your life, you just have to trust God. Even when it seems, it seems so difficult. It seems so, how will I ever be able to possess it? But we have to trust God. If we are to possess the Pope, if we are to possess the promise, the process sometimes is hard work. You don't become a star overnight. You sometimes have to put in as much as there is anointing upon your life and as much as the word of faith has been spoken over your life. The Bible says, faith without works is dead. And sometimes you need to put in some hard work. Sometimes you need to put in some extra hours. Sometimes you need to go the extra mile. And while you are going the extra mile, you have to patiently wait on the Lord. Because the Bible says that those who patiently wait upon the Lord. He will renew their strength. Hallelujah. You have to work. You know, in this, uh, uh, in the kingdom today, people believe that when they pray, everything is going to happen automatic. You know, you pray and fruit, there it falls. No, you need to work. You see, David worked for his father. His father gave him an instruction and David was obedient to the instruction of his father. And no matter if the brothers was in the front line, David said, you know what? I will still obey my father even when he don't see. And David worked and he tended to that sheep. He took out the nails and the, and, the, and the fleas and whatever. He took it out as if his father was right there. And you see, hard work also brings promotion. Hard work brings you in a place of promise and providence as well. You can't sleep till one o'clock and expect God is going to give you a job. A job is not going to fall out of the sky for you. You have to work at it. You have to position yourself. You see, when David positioned himself to kill the lion and the bear, it was a positioning to destroy Goliath. You cannot destroy a Goliath if you did not pass the test of killing the lion and the bear. Uh -huh. And so promotion does not happen automatic. Praise the Lord for that. If we are to possess the promise, the process sometimes is hard work, sometimes standing alone. David also learned to slay a giant. He cannot use Saul's armor. Saul gave him his armor, and David said, Saul, your armor is too heavy for me. It is too big for me. You cannot ride on Pastor Francois' anointing for your breakthrough. He's a great man, praise the Lord. But you also need to trust God with your armor to slay your giants. Hallelujah. 
And David could not slay the giant with Saul's armor. Sometimes mommy and daddy's prayers is not enough. Sometimes you need to rise up, close the door, and ask God, come and intervene in my situation. Hallelujah. You see, Saul's armor, you cannot make someone else anointing a revelation in possessing your promise. Serving God's purpose will eventually bring you to your place of promise and providence. Doesn't the Bible teach us if we seek His kingdom first and His will first, all the other things will be added to our lives. So when you serve the King's purpose, you'll find your purpose. Because your purpose is locked up in the King's promise, in the Word. Joshua was one to eight says that if you want to be successful, you have to study the word, read the word, meditate upon the word, speak the word, eat the word, because it is the word that will bring you great success in today's life. The word. Not in education. And education is good, but the word far overrides education. The word brings life. When we look at Saul of Tarsus, who became the greatest apostle of the New Testament, even Saul's, Saul of Tarsus' greatness came with a process. Firstly, on his way to Damascus, slain, wanting to persecute the church, he was struck by blindness. Uh -huh. God met him on the way to Damascus. I don't know your Damascus, but what I do know is that God will meet you at the appointed time. And blindness strike him. And you see, sometimes when you go to your place of greatness, when you possess your place of greatness, you have to be struck blind by God so that you can be blind to the things of the world and see in the spirit what is in front of you. Because it is the blindness of this world that will keep you stuck for the rest of your life. There's many believers that is blind by the things of this world, blind by pride. They start off right, but in the process, they get blinded by the things of this world. And the things of this world is keeping them back. The money of this world, the pride of this world is keeping them back with blindness. And so sometimes God allows blindness in your life to open up your eyes in the spirit. Who of you know that even a blind person, you know, when he can't see, he you know where he's going. Because you see, he, he begins to trust in God and he knows, okay, that is the chair, that, that is the, he can even see better than you. Mighty God, I pray that God will strike your eyes blind so that your spiritual eyes will open up and that you will see what God has in store for you. What is in store for your family. Hallelujah. On his way to Damascus, many times we get blind to the things of this world and we cannot see God in the spirit. The Bible say, you know, beloved, we are, you are a spirit with a soul living in a body. You're not a body with a spirit having a soul. You are first a spirit. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, God saw you. He saw your substance yet being unformed. And in his book, he knows your years very well. He knows your years better than you know them yourself. Uh -huh. And that's why you are a spirit. Beloved, our fight is not against flesh and blood, but against powers, rulers, and principalities. And if you're not going to take authority over these powers, rulers and principalities because you are blind you will never get to your place of promise and destiny you will walk like the israelites walk for 40 years in a desert walking going but going nowhere slowly but the best is yet to come the best is in front of you you have to believe by faith that that which is in front of you is greater and bigger and better than those that you've left behind. The garlic pots of Egypt, you, when you ate the food of Egypt, you were a slave when you ate that food. Uh -huh. 
But now that you are out of Egypt, you are not a slave anymore. Why do you want to go back and eat the garlics of Egypt? Rise up, I say. No matter the water restrictions, there is much water in your well. No matter the poverty that you've seen, you are from Goshen. You are of the land of more than enough. God wants to make you an administrator of giving things away and not storing up where the mud and those things can eat it. If you have more than three and you didn't wear it, give it away. You cannot eat all the food. You cannot have all the clothing at once. Uh -huh. If you've got ten shirts in your cupboard, it is time to say, God, because I'm going to inherit my promise, you know, all those clothes is keeping me back. Let me just release it so that I can move forward. Uh -huh. You have to possess it. It's not going to fall in your lap. Remember when the Israelites saw the giants, God did not take the giants away. The giants, when they stepped into their promised land, God didn't make so like a gin in a bottle. Poof, there the giants is gone and there they go. No, the giants was there. God enabled them, the anointing of God upon their lives, destroyed the giants. And now in this season, I believe that God is anointing you to slay the giants. Stop praying, prayers. Oh God, please, if it's in your world, please bless me. Oh, I just want a, a two-bedroom house for me and my cat and my wife. Stop praying those prayers. Because even that prayer is a limitation of what God can do in your life. When I look at my own life, I cannot believe what I am seeing. And yet the world teaches me that seeing is believing. You see, when God takes you to your place of promise and destiny, He will even change your mind. You cannot go with old mindsets into a new place. God, in Saul's case, you know what Saul, God says, Saul of Tarsus, he became Paul, the greatest man in the Bible that wrote half of the New Testament. There are times that names change is necessary for the new nature, the new identity according to the purpose and the assignment of heaven. There is times when your name changes according to the personality trait of heaven. Gideon says, no God, you know, I'm this weak guy. And heaven's response was, God says, you Gideon, mighty man of valor. Uh -huh. Sometimes in your own limitation, you are limiting God. And God is saying, let's just get rid of that mentality, that limitation mentality, that just enough mentality that this is just enough for me because if it's just enough for you it can only sustain you you can't be a light to others if what you have is only sustaining you you can't move in your destiny if you are not prepared to leave the garlic pots of egypt and the slavery mentality in Egypt, you can't move forward because there's greater things in store for the people of God, for the faithful of God. God is busy blessing His people in this time and in this season. And if you're not going to possess yourself, you are not going to eat of the fruit of the promised land. You see, all the doubters and all the complainers, they did not enter into the promise. So when they saw that, apple that was like so big they never tasted of it because doubt and unbelief and complaining they forfeit the opportunity to eat the fruit so doubt and unbelief in your heart will forfeit you of entering into the blessing of the lord that god has in store for you and your family remember those that is mothers and fathers you are busy paving a pathway for your children and the things that you can master in your life, it will follow your children. Solomon, he couldn't, David had an issue with women. Uh -huh. And David did not conquer that issue, and that issue followed Solomon. So in today's life, what we invest here today, in our own lives, uh, it will be cut off. It will be cut off if we have the victory in Christ over our children's lives. But if we can't, then it will follow them. 
Didn't David write, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life as I dwell in the presence, the house of God. When you dwell in His presence, when you dwell with Him, when you have intimacy with God, He is able to do the Bible, say, exceedingly abundantly, far above what you can imagine. Just imagine what God wants to do in your life. I'm telling you this morning, there is books that you need to write. There is books that you need to write. I'm telling you this morning, there's a book that you need to write. There's a place that you need to go to. There's a person that you need to lead to Christ. There is a person that you need to bless. I pray that God will open your eyes, that God will give you the obedience when He speaks to you, that you will be obedient to His word. You see, so Saul's name changed. We see Paul, that was Saul, the persecutor of the church, became Paul, the ambassador and the carrier of the good news of the gospel. Hallelujah. Simon became Peter. Peter, the rock on which the church is built. And the Bible say, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against her. Those that can hear me by live stream, I want to challenge you, come to church. God is still using the church as a vehicle in this society and in this life to release the power, the glory and the kingdom of God. I want to encourage you, don't listen. You can listen to the TV preachers, but you need the fellowship of the believers. The TV preacher cannot touch you. The TV preacher don't know you. I know you. I can touch you. You can touch me. We can have fellowship. You can have no fellowship with a TV preacher. Hallelujah. You need the gathering. The Bible says in the book of Acts, and they came together daily, and they broke bread, and they had fellowship, and God was adding to the church daily those that needed to get saved. We have to fellowship. Swallowship is another word for fellowship. We come together, we follow, and then we swallow. We swallowed yesterday by Pastor Jonathan's house. We came together as fellows, and then we sat and we swallow, and then we went uh, home praying and rejoicing. Hallelujah. We see that there's a name change that, that took place. Abram became Abraham when he was called out of his place of familiarity. Saul became Paul. Uh -huh. And then we see Jesus. I'm going to end off now, beloved. And then we see Jesus. Jesus said, here am I, send me. He said, I, have, I am here to do the will of my father. He told Peter, get behind me, Satan. Because Peter was standing in heaven's assignment. Sometimes the beloved of the Lord means well. When they pray well over you. But sometimes, you know, when even the believers will stand in the side of heaven's assignment, Jesus told Peter, Peter, get behind me, Satan. Because Jesus came to the earth on purpose. And he came with promise. And he says, and he said to Peter, Peter was standing in the way of his son. He told Pilate, no one takes my life. I give my life for the remission of many sins. He told Satan, Satan, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. A king who became a man to obey his father's purpose so that many men can become kings and priests in his father's kingdom. Did you hear that, beloved? A king, a king, a king becomes a man. A king becomes flesh and blood so that many kings and priests would experience the blessing of the kingdom of God. The king that I know, the kings that I know, the kings of today wants honor and elevation. But this king, he laid down his honor. He laid down his elevation. And the Bible says that God has given him the name that is above any name that at the mention of that name, Jesus. Every knee must bow. A king who became a man so that men can become kings and priests in his father's kingdom. He, he wants to process this king. He came and he, and he processed the insults of men. Men insulted Christ. They plucked out his beard. They put a, a, th a thorn of crowns on his head. He exchanged his crown of life 
He gave it to us and he took a crown of thorns upon himself for us. That is the greatness of this king. Today I want to announce to you that there is a crown of life on your head. Because at the cross it was exchanged. Your crown of thorns, the king of kings took it and he took your crown of thorns and he put his crown upon you, the crown of life. That's why the book writes, the writer John writes that in the, in the book of Revelations and the faithful to the end will inherit the crown of life. Beloved, we have to remain faithful up until the end. Not just only faithful. It is good to be faithful. But you have to be faithful until the end in order to inherit the crown of life. He was beaten. He was spit on, beard plucked out. He was nailed to the cross. And he did not have money for a proper burial. The king did not even have money for a proper place of birth. The virgin was made preg impregnated by the Holy Spirit. She was not even married. But this king came down from heaven to earth to make many of us sons of God. A crown of thorns for us. To have a crown of life. Pierced in his side. They pierced our king in his side. And the Bible says, when they pierced him in his side, the Bible says, blood and water came out of his side. You see, even on the cross, Jesus Christ, he gave birth to the church of Jesus Christ. A church full of power, full of glory. The church of Jesus Christ that needs to arise. And he did it on the cross for us. When they pierced him in his side, blood and water. You see, when a lady gives birth, you know, she's about to give birth. Blood and water will come out. The water will break. The blood will come. And it's exactly what happened on the cross. Jesus Christ himself, he gave birth to the New Testament. And now he has given birth to a powerful church. Not a weak church. Not a, 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 a Mickey Mouse church. Not a church of your own empire. But his church, his people. So that people will know. So that the nations will know that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Can we stand to our feet, beloved? Can we give Jesus? Jesus, praise. Hallelujah. There is purpose. There is purpose in the promises of God. All that you have to do, you have to believe it. You have to believe what God's word says. Don't listen to your neighbor that tells you you will not make it. Your neighbor herself or himself, he don't have faith to believe God. You don't know how powerful you are. When the demons come and they want to attack you, rise up in power because remember you have a crown. The demons see your crown. They want to steal your crown. They want to steal your life. They, want, they don't want you to enter into the kingdom of God.